You know, there are some who say you shouldn't criticize the creations of others if you cannot create yourself. Many say that idea is bullshit, but regardless of its merit, I want to criticize and create, even if I have limited ability to do much with the creation part. So how hard could it be to turn something I created into something a little bit more? This is a short story I wrote a while back before I started this whole YouTube thing. I decided to do a little editing, throw some imagery together, put it into another universe, and make it into a shitty movie kind of thing. So enjoy. Or don't. Without further ado, here is Going Nuclear. Jim tapped the buttons on the time clock wearily. Eyes blurred with exhaustion tracked each finger press until the machine beeped its acceptance of his number and gave him his hours of work that day. Twelve and a half. His chest heaved and lowered with a sigh. The day was done. For the moment. He trudged from the building, feet slightly dragging with each step as he headed towards the faded paint of his project car. At times he had fallen asleep in the old Thunderbird after getting home, not even bothering with going inside the apartment he called home. He tugged the handle, opening the door and slumped himself behind the wheel. His posture pulled back, as if gluing himself to the seat. He rested into the seat he had recently replaced in his project car, sinking into the foam as he keyed the ignition. The engine roared to life before purring to an idle, as an older car often does. It brought a smile to his face for a moment as he settled in behind the wheel. Suddenly a sound tore him out of his moment, the radio coming to life, and a set of bips and beeps came from the stereo. His mind read the dots and dashes in his head as if they were spoken word. Meet tonight. Stop. Dragway. Stop. He clenched his jaw a moment and thought then revved the engine a few times. His hand cranked the radio knob around to an actual station, and the sweet sound of old rock filled the cabin. Then he revved up into the proper range before shoving the shifter into gear and tearing out of the near-empty lot. He skidded to a stop on the rocky lot alongside the abandoned drag strip. It had been commandeered by multiple gangs of people over the years. Chem addicts and homeless often huddled beneath the aging bleachers to shoot up in peace, drink, or sleep. Often all three for some. Other times the kids would come around, using the still smooth track to skate and bike up and down the smooth pavement, pretending themselves to be legendary drag racers themselves. But every now and then, every now and then, it would be a host to his fellow adrenaline junkies. Often only for an hour or two after the sun fell, a gaggle of gearheads would gather around to watch or drive. Often times just to run the strip back and forth, show off test the metal of their machines. Other times, two would face off in the middle, driving straight down the track at one another until one or both veered off to the side. Most just called it chicken, but some of his compatriots preferred going nuclear, calling out with phrases like, Hey, you want to go nuclear? Often followed by a sarcastic Russian-accented, Hi, comrade! It was dark, apocalyptic, and part of Jim really enjoyed it, even if he didn't use the saying himself. Most of the time. Jim pulled himself out of his ancient Ford, leaving the door open to lean on. Others had already assembled, and already cars of all sorts were tearing their way down the old drag strip. The only thing visible were the lights streaking away. He could barely hold back his smile as he watched. His mind barely kept track of the various conversations around him. Some about the cost of maintaining and fueling these money-hungry machines. Others talking about whether or not to jerry-rig their vehicles into newer nuclear engines. It wasn't long after when another ancient vehicle skidded up across from him. The driver hauled himself out with more enthusiasm than Jim thought he could ever muster again. The driver sauntered over to Jim, jerking his head upwards as he got close. A newbie? Jim thought to himself, not recognizing the driver. Hey, the driver called out as he came up to Jim. You want to go nuclear? Jim couldn't help but exhale sharply at the cheesiness of it. <laughs> sure, let's get nuclear, you commie bastard. 
Jim's eyes gazed over the tank of a car in front of him. According to his knowledge from over the years, it was a Chrysler Imperial. Made long before the company shifted their name to Chrysler and started pumping out nuclear cars like the Fleas and Corvegas. The driver gave a bit of a guffaw <laughs> and gave a half salute before jogging back to his car. Jim hauled himself back into his Thunderbird, revving the engine a couple of times before peeling away to the opposite end of the track. Jim braked sharply at the end of the track, wheeling himself into position directly over the divided line. He could already see the headlights ahead of him. He flashed his own twice. Twice back the Imperial flashed. He flashed back once, and once back the Imperial flashed in return. And then it began. The Thunderbird roared with life and tore forwards. The engine seemed to strain against the frame itself, hungry for the road. The tires gripped firm and lunged the beast of a car forward. He could see the headlights ahead of him getting larger, but he held the pedal down. His hand gripped and loosened and re-gripped again upon the wheel, twisting over it in excitement. His blood seemed to rage within his body. The lights got brighter, burning into his eyes. He glanced down at himself for only a moment, saw that his seatbelt was forgotten, and he urged the machine harder, working the clutch and gas as he shoved the stick into another gear, and then another, and then another, climbing the numbers. The lights nearly blinded him, but he didn't balk. Instead, he committed. He continued to accelerate until he could no longer see, the light obscuring his vision completely. Then he closed his eyes. His heartbeat calmed, and he felt at peace with his decision. If he died, he died. His mouth pulled into the relaxed smile of contentment. His breath held in his chest for a moment. And then he heard the Imperial roar past his flank. He let off the gas and let the car coast, holding the clutch. His shoulders fell from their tense position, breathing a sigh of relief or disappointment. He wasn't sure. He opened his eyes, squinting to see past the bright, burned blurs etched into his vision. He braked gently, then laid the car back into first gear and wheeled himself back onto the gravel to the sounds of excitement and revelry. It all washed past him as he pulled back into self-imposed isolation. Alright, so how hard was this all to make? I took a week for pure vacation to come back to doing this. This wasn't exactly easy to throw together. Of course, my story was pre-written by myself, for myself, but the extra editing I did took some time and thought to get through. Then of course comes the imagery. A lot of gathering took place to get all of this together. Some of it was from wikis, some from Google searches, and there was a bit of editing of many pictures, manage, select, etc, etc, and of course some pure game capture pieces. And then there was the bit with the hand at the start. Whose hand is it? You don't know. Nobody knows. Doesn't matter. What does matter is that it was filmed over a green screen and I learned how to chroma key in order to throw it on top of the keypad that I created for myself. Pretty quick process actually, and just have to layer the chroma key segment on top of the other footage you're using, and then select the right effect, wiggle the knobs so it looks just right, and then presto, you have a hand! Anyways, it's time for me to get out of your hair. But before you go, if you could just suffer from rampant inflation, clock out of your dead-end job, hit the drag race, and then just not die, people care about you.